A copyright claim on your YouTube video can be frustrating, even scary, especially when one wrong move could see that your entire channel is terminated. So in this video, we're going to show you how to remove these copyright claims so that you never have to worry about your channel being demonetized or cancelled ever again. We're going to cover what exactly a copyright claim and copyright strike is and how serious they are, how you can dispute a claim and all the options you have available with a real example, and we're even going to cover how you can avoid getting demonetized for reuse content violations. This is especially important for faceless channels, reaction channels, essentially any video that relies a lot on content that the creator didn't originally produce. But before we dive into that, let's start with the basics. What is a copyright claim or a copyright strike? A copyright claim happens when YouTube's content ID system spots that your video is using somebody else's copyrighted content. A very common example of this is music in your video that you don't have the license for. But this can also happen for sports clips, movies, television shows, basically anything that wasn't originally broadcast on YouTube. And you'll know you've received a copyright claim when your dashboard shows an alert like this, and you should also get an email that looks something like this. Now, a copyright claim won't lead to your channel being deleted. In fact, it doesn't have any impact at all on the standing of your channel. But that doesn't mean that you should get comfortable with this type of behavior, because as you can see, it does affect the monetization of your video. In very simple terms, think of it as a yellow card in football. That's real football, not American handball. It's a warning but you're not taken out of the game. However, a copyright strike is much more serious. They are like YouTube's red card equivalent. And if you receive three of them within a 90 day period, your channel will be deleted and you won't be allowed to create another YouTube channel. Hi, by the way, I'm Rob and welcome to um, VidIQ if you're new here. We're all about YouTube education, which is why we're talking about copyright, not this. But I've also recently got myself into 3D printing. So give us one of these if you have the chance and if you find all of this stuff useful. Now then, this is important. There is no strict guidance I can offer you on what will earn you a copyright claim or a copyright strike. Some copyright owners are happy to just profit from the ad revenue by claiming your content, but other copyright owners will fiercely protect their content and strike you. So never assume that it's fine to borrow someone else's content because you're confident that at worst, you'll get a copyright claim. That's not always the case. This is why it's really important that you use content that you have the right to use or that you can claim fair use for, which I'll explain a little bit more about later. But what if all of this is too late and you've already been slapped on the YouTube wrist with a copyright claim on one of your videos? How can you get it removed so that your video can keep making money? Let's take you through a real world example. On the content page of a desktop YouTube studio experience, you can filter by videos that have some form of copyright status set against them. You can mouse over the monetization status for a brief explanation or mouse over the restriction status and click to see more details. This will show you the content in the video that is copyright, who owns it and where it appears in a video. You'll also see how this copyright claim impacts the channel. And as you can see in this case, no harm has come to the channel whatsoever. You'll also see the visibility of a video. Some copyrighted content will be blocked in certain countries, such as the example you see here, along with useful data about how much of your audience will be impacted. And finally, we have the monetization status. Most of the time it will look like this, but sometimes you will see revenue sharing, where the copyright owner has agreed to split the revenue with the creator. Now, this is more common when a musician is performing a cover version of an artist's work. And you don't have to do anything to set this up. YouTube will automatically automatically set the video to revenue sharing if it's available. It's also worth noting that you can do a lot of this on the YouTube Studio mobile app, except for filtering content by copyright restrictions, which is a bit annoying. So you have to know the video has a copyright claim on it and then search for it by its video title. Unless I'm missing something obvious, let me know in the comments below if I am. So now you know why the video has been copyright claimed and its impact on your channel. But what can you do about it? Well, on the very same screen, there is this take action button, which will give you four options that we're going to run through now. The first option is the brute force one, which is to simply remove that segment out of the video completely. That will definitely solve the copyright issue, but it may leave your video with a gaping hole in it. So the rest of the video doesn't make much sense. The next option is to replace the copyright music with some copyright free music from the YouTube library. Simply pick a track and it will automatically replace the copyrighted content in the video. 
The problem with this is that if you had sound effects or voice narration in the same place on the video, you'll lose all of that. So the most attractive option is the mute song option because you can try this solution, which is to mute the music, but keep any other sound that was there. But as always, your AI mileage will vary as this doesn't always work perfectly. In this example, my voice was horribly compressed and it was out of sync with the video, but it might be worth a try. This competitor tool is how you keep track of their channel's performance and best videos. But what if all of these options completely destroy your video? Well, if you feel as if you have the right grounds to do so, you can dispute the copyright claim. And again, you have four options for doing this. Now, this can be a lengthy process with a lot to read and do, and it can take up to 30 days to resolve this copyright issue. First up, you can claim that all the work in the video is original content made by you. For any reason you give, YouTube will make you read and confirm you understand what you are stating. And then you have to provide information as to why you think this is the case. The second form of dispute is to claim you hold a license to use the copyrighted content. And if that is the case, make sure you have that proof to hand because you're gonna need it. The third way, and the one that a lot of people mistakenly think is their get out of copyright jail card, but isn't really, is to claim fair use of the content. This means in a legal sense that you've used the copyrighted material in a way that adds new value or meaning and doesn't hurt the original creator's work and their potential to make money from it. A great example of fair use done right is a channel like Cinema Sins. They create videos that point out the sins in popular movies. They typically use short clips from the films and add commentary over the top. A prehistoric rat would never survive in the vacuum of space. And if we want to make this even more complicated, I guess we are now applying fair use to both the movie clip and the Cinema Sins video because we've transformed it into an educational example of fair use done right. I think. You do get to choose a type of fair use category it falls under, but I do highly encourage you to do more homework on what fair use actually is before using it as a simple answer to your copyright problems. We also need to tick this off the YouTube copyright bingo card. Putting a copyright disclaimer like this in your description does not in any way protect you from copyright claims or strikes. Just because it's there doesn't mean it's true or accurate. To be honest, this is a telltale sign that the creator knows their content may be abusing copyright and has stuck this text in the description because they've seen someone else do it on YouTube. The final option is to dispute that the content is now in public domain. This is when the content is no longer protected by copyright through time. A recent example of this is Steamboat Willie that fell into public domain in 2024, allowing any creator to do whatever they want with it. And they did. Whatever type of copyright dispute you raise, the next steps are as follows. The person who made the claim, that's the copyright claimant, has 30 days to respond to your dispute. If they don't respond in those 30 days, then the claim is simply removed from your video and you can monetize it as normal. But obviously they can reject your dispute. And if they do, you can launch an appeal, which I'll talk about in a second. This process does make it sound like the copyright claimant holds all of the power because they can just reject the dispute. And let's be honest, in the past, the copyright system on YouTube has been far from perfect. It's been abused and people have gone to jail trying to play the system. Nevertheless, this is the process YouTube currently has in place and you'll need to work within its boundaries. If the dispute is rejected by the copyright claimant, you do then have the option to escalate to appeal. And this time the claimant only has seven days to respond. However, if this is also rejected, the claimant can then submit a copyright takedown request that would result in a copyright strike on your channel. And as we already know, we don't want any of them. The TLDR here is that you should only dispute a claim if you are 100% certain you are right in your appeal and have the evidence to back up your claim. So much so that you are certain you would win such a case in court because that's where you would be if it wasn't for this YouTube copyright system. Even after all of this, you can still appeal with a counter notification, which then does become somewhat of a legal matter. I'm sure for 99.99% .99 of you watching this video, it will never come to this and definitely don't abuse this system as it's the fastest way to get banned from YouTube. All right, so we've covered what a copyright claim is, how you can remove it or dispute it. But let's do a sidestep into a challenge that nails a lot of channels when they apply for monetization, reused content. This can be a devastating blow, especially when a creator has spent months or years growing their channel 
only to be told they can't make money from it. So let's take a look at how you can prevent this from happening to your channel. And recently, YouTube released a statement clarifying the reuse policy. YouTube defines reuse content as content that is not clearly your own original creation. It may already be on YouTube or another online source and have no added significant original commentary, substantive modifications, or educational or entertainment value. What's really important to note here is that the content doesn't necessarily have to be protected by copyright. Put simply, it's copied trash content that YouTube doesn't want on its platform. The following is a long but not complete list of the type of content we're talking about. Highlights include posting content that's been uploaded many times by other creators without significant commentary or editing, or creating compilations of clips edited together with little or no narrative. Examples include movies, sports, gameplay, montages. You see, since this content doesn't necessarily break community guidelines, you might find yourself happily uploading content like this for months, maybe even years. When it comes to monetization, that's when you're going to get slapped with this reuse policy and get rejected from the YouTube Partner Program. So what can you do to prevent your channel falling to this reuse content fate? Well, you need to make sure that you're adding a significant amount of commentary or editing so that the audience can clearly tell that it's a new piece of content. A term that's often used for this is transformational. Or you're only using a small portion of the reused content and mixing it with a lot of your own content. Again, we've got a long list of recommendations directly from YouTube on screen now, so pause the video if you need to. If you decide not to appeal, you can reapply after 30 days, but obviously you want to do some channel cleanup in that time, so remove videos with a lot of reused content in them. Now I know, I know, YouTube doesn't specifically tell you which videos are violating this reused content policy. So you'll have to exercise some common sense. As well as this, you want to adjust your future content so it doesn't rely so much on reuse content. And make sure you put time and effort into doing this, because if you're rejected a second time, you'll have to wait 90 days. That's three months before you can apply again for monetization. And now for a complete 180, which is a bit weird. But what if you, the creator, are the victim of copyright abuse as someone is stealing your content? Well, YouTube does have a tool for that. It's the copyright matching tool found in a YouTube studio, and it should show you where your content has been found on YouTube. You have several options here that include initiating a copyright takedown, contacting the creator who uploaded a video, or simply ignoring it. These features become more comprehensive once you are in the YouTube Partner Program. There are tons of YouTube settings just like this that you might not be aware of in the YouTube studio that do have a big impact on the performance of your videos. So if you want to learn more about another 16 of them, then check out this video right now.